Only 13.1% of you watching right now have done this, so for NBA hot takes and breakdowns, which you can't miss, subscribe and hit the bell. The Boston Celtics shot 16 more free throws than Golden State in Game 5. Stephen Curry infamously went 0 for 9 from 3 point range. Boston out rebounded Golden State by 8, and the Warriors' two top big men were in foul trouble. Shockingly, the Dubs still somehow won an NBA Finals game by double digits. Steph's Ofer from deep range snapped his playoff record by far of 132 straight playoff games of having made at least one three-pointer, perfectly making up for that headlining lack of deep range bombs from Curry. Golden State improved to an undefeated 2-0 when Jordan Poole hits 10 out of 10 difficulty buzzer-beating three-pointers to end quarter number three. It's easy to forget JP was down in the G League with Santa Cruz a year ago, considering the 22-year-old product of Michigan just scored in double figures for his fourth consecutive finals game. Jordan's had his inconsistencies, but when taking into account this man had literally no playoff experience before 2022, he's done pretty damn good on the biggest stage. The composure from Jordan, Clay Thompson returning to the version of himself we know and love, plus my fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins having the game of his life, combined to give coach Steve Kerr 61 points. We broke down Wiggins in yesterday's video, go watch that after this. But on top of those three, Gary Payton II joined Rick Barry, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green as one of four players throughout Warriors history to post 15 points and three steals in a finals game. Those contributions couldn't have possibly been predicted by analysts trying to estimate the success of these Warriors way back in 2021 summer or even before these finals. With all that said, you can't underestimate the chess moves defensively from Steve Kerr, who's constantly altering his coverages, which along with the Aquarius Clay Thompson is what you're about to see a breakdown of. Quickly, make sure you're staying updated on the highlights and league updates I post on my Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Go follow those platforms linked down below in the description, that's at dflowhoops. In his last three games of this series against Boston, Klay Thompson is averaging 21.3 points per game on over 41% shooting from three-point range, according to StatMuse. In Game 5, KT posted 21 points on 50% shooting from the field. The second half of the Splash Brothers, Klay Thompson took a splash in the ocean prior to Game 5, writing on a post for his Instagram story, The Ocean Heals the Mind, Body, and Soul. That post went viral, while Klay went a lot further in depth on the ocean during his post-game interview. The biggest headline and quote, however, was him saying, I've never been so excited to go to Boston, I'll tell you that. Whether you're a Celtics or Warriors fan, you have to embrace how awesome it is to see a man who's got debatably the nicest shooting form in league history not just come back to near full strength, but contribute significantly on both ends to the point where he's helped his team back to a near fourth championship in the span of eight seasons. Play's ability to lock up his matchup post-ACL tear and Achilles rupture has been the biggest surprise with him given it's a skill that requires quick footwork and lateral movement, therefore a ton of lower body strength. Thompson hasn't been a liability guarding his matchup whatsoever, he's even regained some of the all-defensive team clamps when he received that honor three years ago. The perimeter ball hawking and IQ from Thompson is an underrated utility within the brilliant Golden State defensive scheming. The first creative strategy that coach Steve Kerr utilized is displayed on this possession. Watch Steph as Jalen Brown crosses half. Typically he opens possessions on Marcus Smart, but here he motions Otto Porter Jr. to take Smart while he defends Robert Williams, and the reason for this is pre-switching Otto onto Marcus prepares the Warriors for Boston's heavily ran Tatum Smart pick and roll. Boston would have exploited the smaller Curry in this action earlier in the series, but here it's a switch between two lengthy wing players as Boston's top player goes from being clamped by Andrew Wiggins to being clamped by Porter Jr. and Wilt Chamberlain forces Tatum to put it on the deck, give credit to Wiggins who stunts at Tatum during his drive, and all that forces the errant pass. The pre-switch strategy allows Golden State to feature their most well-built point-of-attack isolation defenders, as opposed to having smaller players guarding Boston's go-to actions, who can be easily exploited. 
What will go overlooked about this defensive set is the vocal leadership that's crucial for it to work. Watch how Draymond Green reminds Curry to fall back and that he's pre-switching onto Steph's man, in this case Derek White, who sets a screen for Jalen. Because of that, Marcus Smart's forced into what's called a keep action, faking the handoff, but Curry doesn't take the bait, staying in front of Smart, and stifles his shot attempt. Constantly mixing up their scheming, Kerr throwing out different personnel, and the perfectly anticipated backside help have combined to suffocate the Celtics' half-court offense, holding them to a 94.3 half-court offensive rating during these finals, which would have ranked 20th during the regular season. In their attempts to hunt for the weakest link, the Celtics have made their offensive approach pretty predictable, making them even more susceptible to sudden changes in defensive schemes. For example, Boston tries to attack Steph right here through a combination of two different screening actions to get him switched on to Brown, a wide action followed by a double screen alignment. When both Celtic actions are stopped, they try a final attempt at getting Brown onto Curry, which is when Curry and Clay trap Brown around the screen. Derek slips the screen, receiving it on the short roll, and chooses to attack the rim straight on, as opposed to punishing a scrambled defense with a weak side kickout. That choice ends up being deadly, as Green's in perfect position as the low man to stuff the attempt. We rightfully got caught up in the showing from Wiggins, but this game had Green's fingerprints all over it, specifically on defense, Green's anticipation off the ball, and swift rotations to provide help are what Dre makes his reputation off. Boston was held to 36 points in the restricted area in Game 5, and just 13% of their shot attempts came at the rim. For that, Green deserves his flowers. The former DPOY's mix of awareness, reach, and IQ worked to neutralize Jalen Brown. Green knows the scouting report says to cut off Jalen's right side, and Dre does that right here, shading Brown to his left, with Curry showing early help. Brown struggles to get past Green while dribbling to his offhand, and with Gary Payton II looming in the passing lane, Brown kicks it out in desperation into the waiting arms of GP2. Sticking to their patented game plan of protecting the bucket at all costs, fueled by versatility, connectedness, and interchangeability, has paid off in a major way. If the Warriors win the chip in the upcoming days, their on-a-string defensive system will undoubtedly deserve a significant amount of credit. Who wins game 6 and why? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winners are Kent and Swoo. Pause to read their takes and the honorable mentions. Appreciate every answer. Deflo signing off.